Our next topic is really all about transdermal science and technology that's really exciting, new, and Siles uh, out of Denmark is a spin out from uh, university, and we're really pleased to welcome Dr. Ann Ladegard Skoff, and uh, we're really excited to have you join us, Dr. Ann, as I'll call you. And so tell us not only about um, where you come from in terms of that technology, but but this exciting opportunity. And uh, and again, welcome. So uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much for the nice presentation, Keith. Um, I'm, I'm a researcher and I'm heading the Danish Polymer Center here in, in Denmark. So it's evening time. Um, and we have been working with, with patches for a, a long time and today I'm actually wearing one. It's a commercially available one. It matches my shirt so I like it slightly more today than I have done the other days. And then basically what you see here is, is our technology where we think one of the main advantages is that it's actually invisible. Um, so you can use it without your your colleagues knowing that you are wearing um, a patch. Um, so I will go through my my uh, slides here, and um, yeah, as I said, I'm I'm working in academia, and recently I got engaged in um, spinning out this company from the university. I have been working with silicone elastomers for artificial muscles, actually, and the technology came from, we basically saw that we didn't have any um, durability of our materials because our actives started leaking out. And from that, we got the idea, okay, if active starts leaching out, we actually have a drug delivery device. So I will go through um, our experiences with transdermal patches and talk about our technology that actually deliver precision dosing via transdermal delivery. So as you can hear from the previous talk, there is a growing need for improved cannabinoid delivery devices. Um, it's obvious if you look into the statistics from the US where one out of six users face some sort of use disorder, and here in Europe, we see a very slow adaption, mainly because people fear that they, their patients or themselves will experience use disorders. Also, as has been discussed earlier, the cannabinoids have limited oral bioavailability. And when we look into um, the oils, the capsules and the vapors and, and flowers, or vapors of flowers, then again, we see a lack of control of the specific dose. Again, also with respect to having a precise dosing, then we believe that if we have precise data for the cannabis society, then we will also be able to have better data to, um, to, to, um, to make sure that, that we have reliable data and it will be easier to get uh, products approved. So when we talk about the, the skin, as um, Dr. Woodcock mentioned earlier, there has been more focus on making transdermal enhancers so we get a faster delivery of the cannabinoids to the bloodstream. We have with our technology uh, that we can provide precise and continuous dose over time. And we also believe that the patient-friendly delivery method of applying a patch is something that would enable more people to use it. Also, if you are a patient and you are asleep, actually the nurse will be able to change your, your patch without you noticing. Also, the skin route, we have the elimination of the first pass effect uh, from the liver. Um, so obviously, the topical and transdermal cannabinoid patches are, are gaining uh, traction. And they have, are expected within the next seven years to increase by 100%. Patches uh, are approximately 5% of the legal cannabis uh, or the medicinal cannabis market at the moment. So with our technology that I will present in detail uh, in the coming slide, we have been verifying it in wound care, a quite complex area to work, but we have tested and proven that our technology is significantly better than the existing um, technologies available. 
We have also tested in cosmetics where we have proven that we have the capability of storing our actives for extended time without any degradations of the active. So we actually know that we still have active components inside our materials. Um, we have been researching and, and further de de developing um, our technology over almost a decade by now. We hope by providing a very um, control technology that we can capture a significant share of the legal cannabis patch market, which is projected to be uh, 4 billion US dollars by 2027. So if we look into our patch, you, I tried to point at it later, but here we have a, or earlier, we have a patch here. It's invisible, it's very skin friendly. Um, it can actually be reapplied multiple times. So if you put it in the wrong place, then you can just readjust it. It doesn't have any initial burst, which is important. So we can really deliver a constant uh, dose. We can target and control our dose of the cannabinoids over extended time of, of period, depending on how we design our material. So basically we can have multiple days for some drugs we have shown to, to almost up to the scale of a month of, of delivery. But basically depending on how we design our system, we can also control how long we want to have the controlled release. Uh, we can also have multiple drugs if we, for example, want to have transdermal enhancers or we want to have an oil with extra CBD, for example, then we can design our system to, to do that. We can have an adjustable release of the cannabinoids and, and this goes with, with the release properties of our product. When we are just talking about the patch, it's ultra thin, it's almost invisible. We can really breathe when we are wearing it and it absorbs sweat very easily. It conforms to the skin dynamics and it has this very smooth skin adhesion arising from the silicone. A very positive thing is also that there is no contact dermatitis from, from silicone materials, um, which I'll come back to later. When we look at the components that we use to make this patch, they were all very simple, they are well known, they are biocompatible, and we can get them as medical grade constituents. The process of making the patches is straightforward and we have shown it's a scalable process. So when we look at the te technology and the release mechanism, then basically what we have is we have small droplets of glycerol within inside the, the silicone matrix. So when we uh, put on the, the patch, the skin naturally starts sweating we have the sweat going up into the hygroscopic uh, glycerol, and then it creates a pressure that then pumps out the drug. Um, what is very important and differentiates our, our technology from, from others is that usually they have the drugs, they have to migrate through a thick polymer layer. But for, for our technology, we only have migration from drug to drug, and then we have the from the drop the, at the interface down to the skin. So in that way, we can have a controlled release of our drug. We don't see any initial burst of the drug, which is very important, important if we want to claim constant dosing. And when we look into how we actually make our products, then we take a commercially available silicone prepolymer, adhesive prepolymer, we mix it with glycerol where we beforehand have just dissolved the active substance and we just mix the two components together uh, by high shear um, speed mixing. And then we have a glycerol and silicone prepolymer emulsion. It's extremely stable and it's so stable that we can heat it up. So the silicone solidifies into an adhesive, which is a solid material, but with significant amounts of, of liquid. If we add 40 PHR, so that's 40 grams of liquid glycerol into the, to the 100 grams of the silicone, then we can see we have dis discrete uh, droplets uh, with very monodispersed size. When we go to the double amount of the glycerol, we have the double number of droplets, same size. And then again, if we go really far and actually add more glycerol than uh, silicone, we still have a solid material but we have a bicontinuous structure. So 
Then in these situations, we have dist different distances that our drugs should travel. And um, therefore we get different uh, kinetics release. But what we see is when we have high concentration of glycerol, that we have a very constant release rate. We have a um, straight line through here. And not until the last approximately 10%, we see a decline in the release rate. This is very favorable when we go to the release curves where here it's shown, if you take an oral dose and you take another one, you are cycling up and down in the concentration of the drug in your, your bloodstream. However, if you take a patch, and that was as Dr. Dr. Wood was talking about that, of course, with the patches, we don't have an immediate uh, relief from the patches because it needs to go through the, the transdermal layer. On the other hand, when we have it equilibrated, we can, by having very long release times, then we can have a, a plateau. And the longer we can wear our patches, the longer time we can be in a stable region. So therefore, we also think it's very important that we offer something with extended time of wear. And of course, here it comes into consideration, our patches, they should also physically be able to stick to the, to the, to the skin for the same amount of, of time. We can also, depending on how we mix our mixtures, but we can take several drugs, we can mix them together, and we get drugs in different compartments. So for example, if two components are reactive, it's very favorable to have them in individual compartments. We can cure it in and we can see that we have individual linear release profiles. Here, the black ones is a very big molecule, so it comes out a lot slower. And we have the red ones that come out fast. When we look at the patch um, itself, then um, silicone in wound care area is known as state-of-the-art material. It's more expensive than the existing adhesives, but in wound care, it's prioritized that it has this soft skin adhesion. But one issue for uh, silicones is that when you start sweating, um, you can actually sweat your patch off. So we realized rather quickly that actually because we have the hygroscopic glycerol in our patches, then we could absorb extreme amounts of, um, of water. So basically what we have shown here in the dark blue curves, there we have the water absorption as a function of how much um, glycerol we have, have added. So basically, uh, if we have 50 pHr of glycerol, we, you, it is impossible, I would say, maybe somebody can do it, but it's very, very difficult to, to sweat the patch off. So basically it means it keeps sticking to the skin, which is uh, very important if we want to go for extended times. Then also, if we want to wear the patch for multiple days, we want to be sure that our skin can actually breathe. So here we look on permeability and silicones is no, or they are known to be very permeable, but it's still not entirely enough. And with our technology, since the oxygen goes easily through the glycerol droplets, then we have actually managed to increase it by a factor of, of at least uh, three times. So that is wrapping up um, the good things. Also, if we look into contact dermatitis, then because we have our drugs in the small droplets, we don't have a lot of concentration of the drug at the interface between the skin and the patch. So basically the skin doesn't see high doses as it does in, in other uh, products. Um, our drug release is predictable. Here I've shown it as function of the glycerol loading um, and sample thickness and drug concentration. And we have, of course, also looked into what are the effects if I suddenly want to enter a sauna, for example, will I get a burst of, of drug? But our conclusion is that with the patch, we cannot say it's completely independent of temperature. But on the other hand, what is a common skin temperature, at least in wound care, they reported a 32 degrees Celsius, that's the average temperature. It's 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and then when you go to a, a sauna and stay there for extended time, your temperature or the skin temperature will reach um, 40 degrees, which is about 104 uh, Fahrenheit. 
So basically, if we say we go from normal conditions and into the sauna, we only see approximately 20% uh, extra release. We have, it's predictable, it's predictable um, uh, along a broad range of active substances, and we have tested antimicrobials, anti-inflammatories, antioxidants, enzymes, and we have figured out that our technology only has one limitation. If the molecules get too, too big, above 2,000 Dalton, or 20,000 Dalton, then our technology cannot deliver any longer. On the other hand, that corresponds to some of the big enzymes, the small enzymes we can still work with. So we have a system that's easy to design. It's predictable what the release rate will be. And we are looking further into uh, to the modeling at the, at the moment. So we have a predictable tool across a lot of, of drugs. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we started out in, in wound care. And just to show how efficiently our drugs actually release drugs, here we have a Petri dish. We are comparing it against uh, two commercial state-of-the-art adhesive with antimicrobial effectiveness. And after 24 hours, we see that we have cleared uh, a lot of the bacteria by our technology. So that's our small patch. Um, and by that, we got rather confident that we had the technology also to enter into to drug delivery. So when we look at our patch technology, we think it combines the best of, of two worlds. A common type of, of patches is the reservoir type. Um, where you have your, your drop, the green dots here, they are in a reservoir and you have the adhesive down towards the skin. So when you have your drop uh, migrating through, for example, the silicone adhesive or whatever adhesive, then you have a concentration gradient through your, your polymer. That gives the classical first order um, kinetics. And then we also have the matrix where the products we have been looking into, they come in, in very different uh, qualities where some of them you will actually see that the oils are present up on, on top. Some products they have like foam here in the matrix and you can easily see that the yellowish uh, oil is situated at the top and the bottom of, of the foam. And of course, that means that there is a lot available here immediately to, to the skin. And there will be a zone where there is not so much. And depending on whether this is stuck or not in the material, it will come as a, as a later uh, release. So by that, we have combined the, the best features of both two technologies into to our product. We have uh, struggled a bit due to COVID and uh, also to the, to the slow entrance of cannabinoids into to Denmark. So we only very, very recently got hold of some CBD patches. We have been looking into multiple ones and we have been characterizing two award-winning CBD patches. One here is with 40 milligrams. It claims that it has a consistent delivery and it can deliver up to 96 hours of relief. And when we do the measurements where we um, apply it on an artificial skin, skin membrane in a fran cell, then we see that the first day it releases an average of 0.52 milligrams per hour. Day two, within 24 hours, the average speed is 0.52. Uh, zero to milligrams per hour. So definitely there, there is room for improvement. Most likely the patch has been emptied before the, the 24 hours. We are of course testing further, but we only had um, access to a, a few patches. Um, yeah, well, another award-winning CBD patch uh, here. I forgot to mention that the first one, when we test the, the material, then we can see that 70% of the CBD is actually not released from the patch. And we believe that is because it's stuck up on top of, of the foam. Another patch here, it releases fully. Um, it says it has eight to 12 hours of systemic uh, release. It has accurate dosing. And of course, this is almost the truth. At least for the first three hours, we have a constant release rate here. 
but then we see that the release rate slows down. Um, so even state-of-the-art commercial cannabis um, patches don't really deliver constant dose over time. We are currently in the process of patterning our technology. We needed some modification to the existing one to, to, to get a proper release, but we can have, as is seen here for a model substance, that we can have constant release for about 30 hours um, of a very small molecule. So it means we will be able to incorporate the bigger CBD and THC molecules, for example. So I have been wearing some of, of these patches to better understand what are we up against, what are, what are the issues with the current ones. And um, this one, um, uh, it's again, it's a, it's a matrix type here. It has foam, I put it on and it was nice and pleasant to wear for about 30 minutes. Then I started having a, a weird sensation in my hand. And after about, I think one or one and a half hour, I actually took it off to see what was actually happening below the patch because it was, uh, it was not painfully itching, but on the other hand, it was rather uh, unpleasant. Um, so basically when I took it off, then I could see where uh, the foam had been that I had started sweating so excessively because the breathability of, of the pads was, was too low. And then my sweat was going into um, the cannabis oil, which already had made a film on, on my skin. So basically my sweat has been diluting the, the cannabis film on, on the skin and of, or thereby diluting it down and slowing down the, the kinetics of the cannabinoid oil uh, moving into to my bloodstream. The good thing about the, the patch was it was not really so nice to, to wear this bulky part with the foam was slightly unpleasant. But on the other hand, when it started falling a bit off, I could replace it. That is one of the only patches um, I have tested so far where it could actually be, be done. Our technology, I mentioned it earlier, but it can be, be replaced easily multiple times. Then another one, it started itching of around after two hours and I took off the patch. And as you can see here, there's no patch, but you can clearly see where my patch has been sitting. And this whitening of the skin indicates that my skin has not been able to breed uh, to the extent that it actually needs. Another funny product, uh, very green and very obvious that I am wearing it, it uh, started changing color. Initially, it was very dark um, green, but after some time, I could really feel that I was sweating because it was not permeable at, at all for, for my sweat. And then I could see it lost contact as I have been trying here to, to draw. Um, that um, here it has lost grip. And in other hands, if it loses the adhesion to the skin, it also changed the delivery mechanisms. Um, also within very short time, it started uh, uh, moving away from the skin at the edges. And it, all, it never really remained on my skin for more than four hours when I really was being quiet and, and not moving around. Our technology, when we have tested it on how long we can wear it, we have been wearing it for three, four, five days, um, depending a bit on like when we shower with them, we do exercise and so on. Sometimes uh, like the towel uh, can take one. But on the other hand, usually they survive for, for three, four, five days. Um, so our technology, it has roots in, in academia. We have researched a lot and we have focused on, on wound care. It's in wound care, we have shown that it has a superior antimicrobial efficacy over existing products. And in cosmetics, we have shown that if you, for example, have vitamin C in a lotion, then you will know that the vitamin C concentration is diminishing rather quickly over time. But within the glycerol phase in, in our patches, we see that we have an almost constant concentration of vitamin C. We are currently doing research collaboration with um, a hospital in Copenhagen, where we are looking into skin cancer post-treatment 
where they don't have any method to deliver um, the rather strong uh, cancer treatments. So we are, we are entering that area. And we are also working with another uh, university, another university um, hospital in Copenhagen, where um, they have issues when they fix the insulin pumps and the glycose sensors on the skin, especially on, on children's skin, um, that they end up with very strong contact dermatitis. So here we believe in, in these two areas that our technology also has a, a great potential. So to wrap up our technology, we have shown proof of concept on a wide range of, of drugs and also on the PATH technology itself. We have verified that large scale processing is as simple as we, we claim. And currently we are working on, on prototypes. We have our technology protected by two very broad product patterns, one on making a stable mixture of glycerol in, in silicone, and then also the controlled drug release from, from these. Currently, as I mentioned earlier, then we are filing a patent on the small adjustments that are needed for the cannabinoids to be efficiently released. And just to show an intermediate product here, the picture shows a film of our adhesive. It's slightly white, but when you put it on the skin, it's very transparent. And then uh, these can be cut and assembled into two patches. So our company status and, and business model is we are a spin out in speed from the Technical University of Denmark. Uh, we will incorporate our company uh, during September this year. And we have a licensed buyout agreement of our IPI with uh, DTU in place. And our anticipated business model is that we want to license the technology or potentially also become an o OEM. We are therefore looking for partnerships and or capital to, to scale. In so, addition to all, all your technology uh, background, now you're in the business side of it, right? Uh, yes. So just a small, small summary, we are expecting the transdermal cannabis patch market to, to, to increase by, by 100%. Um, and we see that the patch market currently is 4 to 5% uh, in the US, and it seems to be, be growing. And we, of course, hope with our technology with that we can make it grow even further. Uh, the cannabis patch market is estimated to 4 billion uh, US dollars in 2027. And we think that a, a key driver for that will be that we get more data based on reliable and controlled dosing of cannabinoids for uh, medical studies and, and so forth. And that we have our technology that can deliver, as I have shown, it's targeted, controlled, and we have the extended period of time. And also the technology of patches, it's a very user-friendly uh, way of using it. It's easy to administer and it's comfortable to, to wear. So we believe we have a, a top-notch technology. And uh, by that, I would like to say thank you very much. And any comment from a question that came in on chat where uh, it's optimal for patch placement, just in general, any experience or, or comment uh, experience-wise? So you want a place where it's, it's relatively uh, close uh, to, um, to, like, for example, on your, your arm. That is the most common place, but you can also put it on the back uh, of your shoulder or on your back. Um, we, we are usually, when we test it, so then we put it somewhere here on the arm because then it's so easy to, to inspect it. But the recommendation is really on the back of your shoulder because there is not so much influence. When you have your hand, you do a lot of, of twists. So mm -hmm. it, it can be very hard uh, testing conditions for your adhesive. And, and any comment just to take, you know, what one, you know, takeaway I have, because I know people who, uh, for many different, let's say, ailments or complaints, one might be sleep. And, you know, uh, you demonstrated where for a while there's, a, you know, a performance, but then there's crash, right? So you don't get necessarily a full night benefit if, if someone, for example, is thinking uh, a longer, you know, meter dose. So is it correct to say that it's possible you might say envisioning a patch that could be 
as specific as a, a 10 hour good night sleep that really does meter out, let's just say two milligrams of THC with some other formulation, but in that very measured dose for say 10 hours or eight hours or some you know, sleep cycle aid or that kind of precision as well as multi-day. Our, our dream is, is for sure to have a patch with, with different release or substances release over time. The technology can, can, can do that. Of course, it is it's also really dangerous, as you saw, that we have this increase. If you go into the sauna, you have 25%. Uh, percent. Also, if you want to stay up late one night, you will just be hit by the, by the CBD. So mm -hmm. it, it, it is complicated, but, but I think we can, or we have discussed it a lot and we have the capabilities to, to design it. I think we need to learn a bit more about what is acceptable, what is like, what is the lag time. That of course depends on how many transdermal enhancers that you incorporate. Um, so, so, so there are there are many factors. Um, Thanks so much again for presenting Siles and transdermal technology future. And the, the good news, it's actually here today. So when I say the future, I mean like like tomorrow, if possible. <laughs>